Welcome to the InfoGov Hot Seat Vodcast, featuring candid interviews with practitioners, consultants, and solution providers on hot topics in the information governance industry. Here's your host, Jim Merrifield. Well, hello, and welcome to the InfoGov Hot Seat. I'm your host, Jim Merrifield, and with me today is Tim Brady at Caligo. Welcome, Tim. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you in the hot seat. Get to chat with you after uh, InfoCon 2024. It was nice to, to see you in Houston. Uh, but before we get to uh, InfoCon, uh, would you like to please provide a brief introduction of yourself, your current role, and one fun fact about yourself? Yeah, so I'm I'm currently CEO of a company called Caligo, and we're a North American-based uh, email management company, so intelligent email management and compliant email management. And uh, before Caligo, I, uh, I like to say I grew up in the financial services industry at a bank and then at a hedge fund and got to see the challenges of uh, information management, information governance firsthand, which is ultimately what led me to, uh, to Caligo. And uh, and a fun fact about me, when I'm not uh, building Clio and working, I am often found on the trails, either running or cycling or on the golf course, and I uh, love to uh, be active and get outdoors and uh, so doing whatever sport uh, is interesting at the time. So, Awesome. Awesome. So you're a golfer. So what's, your, what's your handicap these days? You want to say that live on, uh, on record? I, I would say I'm a wannabe golfer. I love being out there and uh, nothing better to do in the summer on a weekend, but uh I uh, wouldn't say I, I definitely will not share my handicap on a public forum. Hey, I tried. I tried. You know, hey, who, who doesn't like to, to hit the hit the links and have a few beers and uh, have a good time in the outdoors? So uh, from one golfer to another. And I was disappointed to have missed your uh, Arma New England uh, golf uh, event uh, this year and last, but uh, hope to uh, make it out to that sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. At some point, we'll, we'll definitely connect them and do it. So thanks for the introduction with the company and, uh, and again, your background. Um, I know I saw you at InfoCon 2024. You guys were, your company, Caligo, was a uh, supporter, an exhibitor uh, at the event. And uh, what were your key takeaways from the event? Yeah, so the, the kind of number one thing that dawned on me and was very apparent to me at the uh, conference was the kind of dominance of Microsoft. You know, in previous years, you're having conversations about other platforms and uh, things like that. And this year, it just really struck me that every conversation was, you know, we're on SharePoint or we're on Microsoft 365. Now, how do we make it compliant and, and work for our organization and uh, and manage our records in 365, right? And I would say in any conversation, you know, we didn't have that was directly in that was, was about how do we move, you know, we're moving to SharePoint and uh, we want to bring our records management to uh, SharePoint, right? And so, that was just a very, very strong trend I noticed this year, just being, you know, on the floor and uh, across the different sessions and whatnot. And uh, um, I think, you know, you continue to see Microsoft making um, a stronger name for itself in, in the, both the SharePoint uh, adoption. And uh, it's really global, right? Not just uh, North America, but uh, around the world. One of the other trends that stood out to me was just digital adoption in general, right? It's uh, no longer a question of if we do this in the cloud, right? It's it's now how do we do it and what's the best way to do it? What technologies can enable us to manage our records in the cloud? And uh, that obviously has been going on for a number of years, but this year it was just extremely apparent to me that the, every organization is thinking about how do we do this, right? And overcoming the security challenges of the past and things like that. So curious if, you, if those things stood out to you at all and uh, if you noticed anything similar on your set. Yeah, for sure. I, most companies, right, are all in on Microsoft um, because we all own Microsoft to, to some degree. I think there's a lot of interest around Copilot and AI, and um, people are interested in how to secure the data within the Microsoft tenant, their Microsoft tenants, and that's why I think there's a lot of buzz around around Microsoft and Copilot and um, and just cloud technologies uh, to begin with. Absolutely. Yeah, and the other thing, and I picked this up at Arma Canada in the spring as well, but it does seem like email management is front and center, right? And uh, not just at our booth where we, you know, where people come to us because they know it's that's what we do, but even looking across the sessions and and speaking to folks at the different events, it uh, it does seem like everyone's struggling with email management as they always have, but now they're looking to do something about it, which is 
which is awesome, right? It's a, it's a very challenging thing. And, uh, you know, our mission here is to make the very, very complex, make it super simple and easy, but, uh, um, that was, you know, stood out across our whole team. We, we were very, uh, um, you know, positive, uh, just seeing that come up so much. So. Yeah. I mean, a lot of business is done. Most business is done through email, right? These days. And, um, let's face it, no matter if you're a lawyer, business professional, solution provider like yourself, nobody likes to file emails. Like filing emails is like an administrative burden that nobody wants to spend the time uh, to do. So, I mean, you mentioned email management and you mentioned what Caligo, uh, how Caligo, Caligo helps, I guess, solve that email management issue. What's, what would be like your 30 second pitch? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what would be like your 30 second pitch? How can you help us solve this email problem? Yeah, and it's it's really accentuating, you know, the point you just made. It's like something like five of every six records that come into the organization come in via email, right? Or ten percent of your your emails you receive on a daily basis as an average knowledge worker are records and need to be put away somewhere. And so how do you take them out of email and store them where they should be stored, right? Have the right retention disposition on them, maybe grab some metadata along the way so you can actually find the things later. Right. And how do you make that insanely easy for users? Right. And so Caligo, our, our mission is just make that complex process extremely simple, use intelligence and automation to make it, you know, extract the metadata and things like that automatically um, and just help you get them from Outlook into SharePoint where they fall under these policies and are secure and compliant and and just make that super easy from the app you're already spending your day in. Right. And where the re- records are coming into the organization. I like the pitch. So I know there were lots of discussions around AI. I'm sure AI can help with uh, email management at some point, right, in the near future if it's not already. But there was a lot of talk around AI at this conference, at you know every conference these days. What advice would you give IG professionals to stay ahead of the curve? Because it seems like this group is positioned well to pave the way for corporations and organizations to safely utilize ai yeah i you know we commonly give the advice and my my view is that uh you know don't right don't just plug it in and try it and roll it out broadly so stop pause and you know, what's great about this group at the conference is these are the folks that are and this is even a change year over year are having those conversations and thinking about how do we build the foundation how do we control our data let's structure it a little bit clean it up figure out what we have what we don't have first before we go and roll out any co-pilot like agent right and that's the right approach you know get an environment or a location where you know what's in it what results are going to turn up when you try something like a co-pilot and and you plug it in and point it at that test location first to make sure you're happy with the results and the accuracy and all those things and then look to roll it out broader but it's 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 a journey right you need to go through the whole ai readiness cycle before you plug these things in Uh, you know if i think about we really put it into two buckets of risk, right? And there's the oversharing risk, which is you don't want things to turn up that shouldn't be there, right? What's someone's salary and it turns up a number that's supposed to be confidential as an example, but then the undersharing risk. And if it doesn't return results that are effective and what people want, and it's too locked down, then no one's going to use it. And so I wish there was like a clear cut go error on this side, but it really is finding that delicate balance of the two things. And it's really important to get right. But the community at uh, Arma, we were having a lot of those productive conversations, but how do I tag this, these documents? How do I tag these emails? You know, how do I make sure that the permissions are correct in this area? Right. And, and, and all those things. And, uh, that's a notable change year over year, but it's, uh, it's, uh, that's, that's our recommendation is do that heavy lifting first, prepare a plan, you know, measure twice, cut once type thing. And, uh, this group seems to be on top of it. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's a lot of interest around purview and tagging and sensitivity labels and things like that. Not just deploying technology like copilot without understanding how the data is being extracted you know into the into the copilot tendon i think a lot of the what's an interesting conversation though is there's a lot of companies both law firms corporations at the conference there's a lot of interest in, in understanding the risk related to internal threats rather than external threats related to deploying ai especially around copilot I don't know if you have any insights into that because it seems like everything I'm reading in the conversations that I've had at Infocon, people are less worried about 
the external threats because especially around you know Microsoft Copilot because technically it's within your your tenant right your instance but as you mentioned with salary date that's more of an internal threat would you agree yeah i think that's an interesting take right and as long as your copilot is staying in and retrieving data from within your your tenant and your boundaries then then there's less risk there what you know some things i've been reading about is how external is able to come in and and see what prompts are being uh, uh, made and, and and have influence over the results and things like that so always you know, making sure you're aware of those external risks. But yeah, in theory, it could be, you know, M&A plans, uh, share buyback programs, uh, salary data. So it's certainly the internal is, is huge here. And and I think that's what most people are focused on, right? Is the boundaries and the guardrails to, to keep it contained um, to start anyway. But uh, I'd say certainly keep an eye on both the external is uh, there's a lot uh, going around in, in new circles about uh, uh, the external threats with uh, the AI agents as well. Yeah, for sure, especially around prompt engineering organizations. I think it was, you know, at least in the law firm world, we're always focused on, you know, precedent documents, knowledge management, and things like that. And I think a, a trend we're probably going to see over the next three to five years is um, organizations being very, how do I say this, a little creating almost faults for their uh, prompt en- engineering strategies. I've been reading a lot about prompt engineering and there's a lot of, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of efforts around that, a lot of training, a lot of certifications. Um, are you seeing that as well? Yeah, one thing I've been thinking a bit about and just saying it out loud for the first time is when you, when there's a prompt that goes into an AI, AI agent, we'll call it co-pilot, um, you know, and, and it produces a result and then you take action based on that result. Is that a record? And what do you, you know, how do you store that? How do you keep record of that? Right. And and I think we're, we're entering new territory. We still have to figure many of these things out. And I say we as a collective, uh, you know, organizations, information management, information leadership community, but you know, there's uh, uh you know, someone as uh, simple as something like a policy or vacation policy, even, and they take vacations and think, they roll over based on an old policy, but you know the, the copilot agent returned the wrong wrong version, right? And it's uh, things like that that can be super simple and not harmful, but there's bigger examples where it could be super harmful. So I think we have to wade through all of those things that maybe maybe the prompts and the responses should all be kept in in a vault as you're as you're speaking to, but um, all areas that are super interesting to see how they will evolve over the next few years. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how prompt engineering um, improves search. I know, uh, you know a lot of organizations are still struggling with search, right? We save things in all these different places, but uh, yeah. to actually find the information we need when we need it, it's another uh, issue that we're, we're dealing with. So we'll have to wait and see, as you said, how things evolve and, and develop. So, Tim, I know we talked about a lot, you know, around the conference, around AI and the different conversations that, uh, that you, uh, at the event. Was there anything else that you wanted to share? with the audience yeah and i just i just build on that kind of point you made there that you know i think the key from our view anyways is is centralize things into the system of record or where they're supposed to be um stored right and that'll that'll allow you to query and find what you're looking for um with much more ease it also helps when you're when you're searching with the uh, various co-pilot agents but you know trend we're seeing ellis maybe highlight a few trends we're seeing in email management because it's an area we spend most of our time in and reading about and whatnot and you know kind of the common things we're we're seeing right now are a lot of storage problems where people are running into the upper limits of what outlook you know now that it's been out for many uh, years or a number of years and even like online archive is now hitting limits at a lot of organizations so that's a big challenge that organizations are going to have to deal with and and store all those records that we thought were going to be able to live there forever into that other place right and so um so that's one thing we're kind of seeing i mean if we think about data being the next gold rush, right? Every organization has so much data, almost too much, right? And it's only going to keep growing. But that data has the potential to be the value of the organization in the future. So how do you harness that, find what's important, what's not, and extract value from it ultimately, or else there's no point in doing it, right? Driving business value, driving insights from that um, is really the key there. Um, and so those are kind of the things we're, we're seeing and spending a lot of time on. I mean, obviously, we didn't touch on it too much, but the, the you know, the uh, plethora of uh, 
um, organizations looking at Purview and, uh, uh, you know, certainly topical at uh, Arma, but uh, everywhere in Microsoft land right now. And then whether it's that or the other the records management solution providers like Gimel that are obviously helping a lot of organizations once you get your records into SharePoint and things like that. I mean, it just seems to be like the trend of, you know, improving our records management is, is stronger than I've ever seen it. And uh, it's a really exciting time, right, to bring all these things together, the records, the data, the storage issues, the compute power, right? And so that's what keeps me excited right now and where we're spending a lot of time thinking about things. So. Yeah, I can see your excitement around data. And, uh, you know, you mentioned data is the new gold. I think that was actually a Super Bowl commercial, right, with Matthew McConaughey, I think, last year. I think he was, I literally, I think he came out and said it was a I think it was a Salesforce commercial on, on the Super Bowl, and he says something about data being the, the new gold. So I guess our industry finally hit the Super Bowl, right? We, we finally spent some money on that million-dollar ad uh, you know, commercial. There we go. Well said. Well said. Yeah. We'll see what happens uh, this year. I'm sure there'll be tons of AI commercials and things like that. So um, there's lots to look forward to. I mean, this is an exciting time to, to be in our industry. I think we're just uh, on the tip of the iceberg here. Um, and, uh, you know, looking forward to having more conversations really with you, especially around that concept that you said, Tim, about is it a record, right? Is when you keep prompting and getting results, at what point is it a transitory file or document? And at what point does it become a business record? I don't think anybody's really answered that question. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that concept develops. Absolutely. So again, listen, Tim, yeah, thanks so much for spending some time having some conversations here on the hot seat, sharing your advice and your insights into the event and, and the industry in general. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on the hot seat like Tim here, all you have to do is submit your information through our website, infogovhotseat.com. And uh, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of uh, your day. And thanks so much, Tim, once again. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It's been a pleasure and uh, great to see what you're doing in the industry. So really keep it up. Absolutely. Likewise. Thanks for the support. Thank you for listening to another episode of the InfoGov Hot Seat. Follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and LinkedIn. Check out our main website at infogovhotseat.com to view our latest episodes and much more.